What up space fam, Golson here from Anime Upper and I'm back at it again with a new One Piece video about the Blackbeard Pirates, the crew that the Straw Hats have to watch out for more than any other. We got a lot of important information that came out about them recently in the manga, so it seems like a great time to do this, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you do enjoy these longer One Piece videos and want to keep them coming, you know what to do, channel Pirate King within, and smash that like button until you set off the YouTube fireworks. Be a smashing Pirate King, rather than passing Orochi, and the universe will reward you. Make this the day you join the Nakama by subscribing and hitting that notification bell to turn on all notifications or you will miss future One Piece videos and updates. And now, without further ado, let's jump into it, spoilers and all. We'll start with the 10 Titanic Captains of the Blackbeard Pirates. Number 1, Jesus Burgess is the helmsman of the Blackbeard Pirates and the captain of the first ship. He's also known as the Champion. He's currently 29 years old. He was first introduced to us back during chapter 222 when he just beat up another pirate, called him a weakling and laughed. He referred to himself as the Champion Grappler. He's one of those strong characters that's always looking for a good challenge. Even before getting his Devil Fruit, he was strong. He lifted and threw a hotel at Ace before Blackbeard told him he should stay out of the fight because he's not up to Ace's level. Post time skip Burgess was defeated by Sabo, who used his newly eaten flame flame fruit to ruthlessly attack Burgess. It didn't help Burgess that he kept mocking Sabo for not being there to save his brother Ace. Still, despite Sabo getting the better of him and hurting him really bad, Burgess ends up recovering and is currently in perfect shape from the looks of it. He even got revenge against Sabo in a way, by helping the Blackbeard Pirates to find the Revolutionary Army's main headquarters. They destroyed the island, but the Revolutionary Army managed to escape. We've recently found out that Burgess has gotten an even better fruit for his character than the Flame Flame fruit. He's consumed the Riki Riki no Mi, aka the Strong Strong Fruit. As Law noted, it gives him super strength, which is a big deal in a world where people without this fruit can already lift stuff like hotels. Whereas we saw pre-time skip Burgess lift the hotel before the ace fight, we now see this new Burgess lift a mountain to the shock of the Heart Pirates. He then throws a mountain at the crew, pretty crazy stuff. It would be surprising at this point if Burgess isn't the physically strongest character in the series, aka the one that can lift the most weight. Because otherwise, what would even be the point of the fruit? And we know that Blackbeard only wants the best of the best fruits, so this one has to be a good one. Number 2 is the 44 year old Shiryu of the Rain, the captain of the second ship. He used to be the head jailer of Impel Down and Ivankov called him as powerful as Warden Magellan. Ivankov even said that he may have been more deadly than Magellan due to Warden Magellan's relative lack of experience. Because he was so dangerous, brutal, and massacred prisoners on a whim, he was imprisoned on level 6. He was released to help quell the prison riots, but then joined the Blackbeard Pirates instead. And yeah, can't say I didn't see that coming. You can't really expect the guy you imprisoned to be loyal to you. When released, Shiryu was also given back his Meito, aka special named Blade, Ryu. He showed his swordsmanship skills when he quickly took out the jailers that released him. Shiryu also saved the Blackbeard Pirates by giving them the antidote to Magellan's poisoning. Later post time skip, we find out that the Blackbeard Pirates took Absalom's clear clear fruit and now Shiryu has it. He used it to turn invisible, sneak up on Moria and then cut him. Most recently we haven't seen Shiryu at the Heart Pirates vs Blackbeard Pirates fight yet, but that just means the Blackbeard Pirates have another ace in the hole and he could potentially pop up anytime if needed. Number 3 is the 27 year old Van Auger, nicknamed the Supersonic. He's a sniper and the captain of the third ship. He debuted during chapter 222 as we saw him shooting down seagulls from a very far distance. To further praise his sniping ability, Nami was saying to Chopper it's impossible that someone was shooting from an island they couldn't even see. Even Usopp our sniper was saying, and I quote, how could anyone see so far? And what kind of gun could shoot all this way? What sniper could do that? They were probably shot somewhere else and just happened to fall here, end quote. So big sniping praise for Van Auger right off the bat, who did in fact take the lives of those seagulls instantly except for one. When Ace appears before the Blackbeard Pirates later, Van Auger interrupts Ace's words by firing firing some bullets at him. But because Ace just turns to fire, they pass right through him. Ace shoots some fire bullets back, which Augur manages to dodge. This is when Blackbeard tells him, along with Burgess, that they aren't on Ace's level yet and they should stay out of this fight. Obviously we know what happened at Marineford and Augur, along with the other Blackbeard pirates, helped finish off an injured Whitebeard. After Marineford, Augur, using his insane ability to see across 
long distances is the one that notices that Akainu is on the approaching marine ship. As a result, Blackbeard realizes that the marines are not planning to trade a warship for Jewelry Bonnie. Thus, the Blackbeard pirates choose to leave since Blackbeard says he's not ready to take on Akainu yet. We saw recently that post Timeskip Augur along with Kuzan helped kidnap Pudding from the Big Mom pirates. He was then seen fighting along with other Blackbeard forces against the Heart pirates. He's been showcasing his new Warp Warp Fruit ability that lets him teleport himself and others to different locations. We don't know the exact limitations of the fruit yet, for instance we don't know the limit to how far Augur could teleport himself and others, but if it's related to his abilities, chances are he can teleport at least as far as he can see, and since he can see so exceptionally far, chances are it's the perfect ability for him. Number 4 is the 42 year old Avalo Pizarro, also known as the Corrupt King. He's one of the oh so dangerous level 6 prisoners from Impel Down. He used to be the king of a north blue kingdom before he was overthrown due to his tyrannical ways. He is currently the captain of the fourth ship. We haven't seen a lot from Avalo yet, but we can assume he's very strong, not only because he was a level 6 prisoner, but also because he's one of the ones who survived after Blackbeard pitted the level 6 prisoners against each other. Thus, he's one of the most dangerous, even among the most dangerous. Again, he hasn't appeared yet in the fight against the Hard Pirates, which just further reinforces that the Hard Pirates are in big trouble since all of these strong Blackbeard Pirates may still appear, especially if they are truly needed. Notably, the Corrupt King wasn't wearing a striped prisoner's uniform at the time of his debut, while the other level 6 prisoners like Vasco, Devon, and San Juan Wolf were. Number 5 is the 41 year old Lafitte, nicknamed the Demon Sheriff. He's the navigator, chief of staff, and captain of the 5th ship. His story is a bit similar to Shiryu's. Lafitte was a former sheriff in the West Blue, but was banished because of his brutality. Lafitte debuted during a warlord meeting, which was impressive because he seemed to sneak in without being noticed, even though a lot of high level people were there, like Sengoku. Since Crocodile is no longer a warlord at this point, Lafitte comes to recommend someone to be his replacement. And as we know, that someone ends up being Blackbeard. From a Viver card, it was revealed that his bounty at one point was 42.2. 2 million berries, but that all but certainly grew since then. He has interesting and useful powers. He can hypnotize people and did that during the Marine Fort arc so that the victims would let any warships close to the gates of justice pass. Another impressive aspect is that he's able to get to such secure places like the Marine's control room and into the meeting with the warlords and Sengoku without being noticed. It suggests he's really good at avoiding being sensed even around people who should have high level sensory hockey. We don't know much about his powers beyond that. We have seen him use angel-like white wings to fly, which is likely a clue to what his devil fruit is, but the power hasn't been confirmed yet. He also likes to use a pistol as we saw when he helps other Blackbeard pirates finish off Whitebeard. And of course, he carries around a cane which can potentially be used as a weapon as well. There are clearly implications that he's strong since he's a Yonko commander, he threatens to kill strong level 6 prisoners like Avalo Pizarro, and he potentially has a zone or even mythical zone devil fruit as the white wings imply. Thus, although the information on him leaves much to be desired, it also serves to hype his character and build up the anticipation for when he gets involved in a big fight. The commander of the 6th ship is none other than the 36 year old Katarina Devon aka the Crescent Moon Hunter. This lady is 11 feet and 10 inches tall. She debuted during chapter 575 as one of the strongest of the strong level 6 prisoners that joined the crew. She does not shoot at Whitebeard like many do, but seemingly uses a spear as the crew attacks Whitebeard together. It truly wouldn't be surprising if Lafitte ended up having a mythical zone since we already have multiple confirmed mythical zones on the crew, and Devon is one of them. She has the Inu Inu no Mi model QB no Kitsune, aka the dog dog fruit model nine tailed fox. This fruit is similar to the clone clone fruit but superior as mythical zone fruits tend to be. Not only can she turn into a nine tailed fox, she can also transform into clones of other people, and unlike the clone clone fruit, she can change the clothing too. So even though cloning is just one of the confirmed powers of this fruit, it already does it better than the Paramecia clone clone fruit. Another ability of course is the ability to transform into a nine tailed fox, although we haven't seen that form being especially useful yet. Devin is one of the commanders along with Vasco Shot that accompanies Blackbeard to Amazon Lily, where the latter confronts Boa and tries to steal her devil fruit. We see some of her warp personality when she says she'd love to have Hancock's beautiful face as a detached head that she'd treasure. Blackbeard is even cool with it as long as he gets Boa's power. However, we don't get to see much action from Devin before she gets turned to stone by Boa's power. She may have remained a stone statue if Rayleigh didn't show up and de-escalate the situation between Blackbeard and Boa. Next we have San Juan Wolf, a level 6 prisoner and a giant of a giant. 
Ivankov singles Great Battleship San Juan Wolf out, along with Devin and Vasco shot, as being one of the worst prisoners in Impel Down, and as a pirate who shook the world. He is currently the captain of the seventh ship of the Blackbeard Pirates. It's also noteworthy that Wolf is 99 years old and 180 meters tall, which is about the height of the Space Needle in Seattle. He debuts in Chapter 575 as he pokes his head out from behind the Marine Ford Fortress, giving a sense of how unbelievably big he is and why he, a person, is referred referred to as a great battleship or a colossal battleship. Furthermore, in the following chapter, it's commented that there's only one creature that big, meaning Wolf is known to tower above all others in size. We haven't seen much of his powers, but we can assume that his strength and destructive power is reflected in his giant size. After all, he was deemed dangerous enough to be a level 6 prisoner. In his Vibra card, it's also revealed that he ate a Paramecia-type devil fruit, an unnamed one that makes him so much bigger than even other giants. Even though the sea is usually deadly for fruit users, Wolf is seen being tall enough to stand in the ocean as we see during chapter 595. Even though he can breathe and talk with his head sticking out of the water like this, he does still whine about feeling weak which must be the fruit user weakness of the sea acting on him. Although it's clearly not as dangerous for him as it would be for less tall people. Next up, we have another level 6 prisoner mentioned by Ivankov, Vasco Shot, the Heavy Drinker. He is the Titanic captain of the 8th ship. He's 38 years old and 18 feet and 10 inches tall. So very tall if you think about it, the only issue is that nothing seems that tall after Wolf's height reveal. Vasco Shot is fittingly one of the ones who shoots a pistol at Whitebeard when the crew is attacking him. As usual, not much is known about his fighting skills. As is the case with most Titanic captains, he has good endurance and could bounce back from attacks by Whitebeard and Sengoku. Chances are he has already gotten or will get an OP Devil Fruit like the others, but it hasn't been revealed yet. He was as mentioned there with Blackbeard and Devon when they attacked Boa. While the latter two were cool with deleting her existence, Vasco thought it would be more fun to take her alive and be quote unquote good friends with her, end quote. But again, as with Devon, his presence was kind of underwhelming here because we didn't see any real combat from him, but just jumped to him being a frozen stone statue. Thanks to Rayleigh's intervention, he was turned back to normal like Devon. Although obviously it makes more sense for Augur, the sniper, to fight Usopp at the end, but again it would be fun to see Vasco and Usopp interact, because according to Oda, Vasco has the longest nose out of any character that has been introduced so far. If these two were to fight or just interact at some point, you know their nose sizes will be brought up. Next we have Doc Q aka the Death God. Ironically, even though he's a doctor of the Blackbeard Pirates, he's actually quite the sickly guy. During his intro, he says he was born with a weak constitution. Luffy and Zoro actually help him get from off the ground back on his horse stronger since Doc Q needs stronger to get around. However, Stronger the Horse is quite sickly too, as we'll get into when we discuss him. Doc Q actually pretends to thank our guys by offering them some apples from his basket. Luffy actually tries one while Zoro rationally refuses, commenting on how suspicious they look. It is only after Luffy swallows the apple that they find out some of the apples have been exploding. However, as Doc Q points out, Luffy didn't grab one of those or else he would have been done already. He comments on Luffy being a lucky boy. I definitely suspected that he'd be older, but in reality, the always sick Doc Q is only 28 years old after the time skip, and despite being that young, he is the captain of the ninth ship of the Blackbeard Pirates. As with most doctors, he can obviously heal, and Burgess specifically asked for him when he suffered massive damage thanks to Sabo and the Flame Flame Fruit. However, as we saw, he can also make non explosive things explosive and deadly, as he did with the apples. He is also known for using a scythe like the Grim Reaper and used it to attack Whitebeard with the other Blackbeard pirates, so obviously he can engage in combat when necessary. He ate the Sick Sick Fruit, which allows him to give illnesses to others. He used this ability against Law and his crew. Specifically, he used the Feminization Disease to humor effect but also to create confusion among Law's crew. Now high level hockey control can still counter the effect of the fruit but you can just imagine how much large scale damage such a power could cause in the world. And I'm sure a lot of the diseases are much more dangerous than the feminization disease that he used against Law and his crew. And again during the Heart Pirates battle Doc Q used explosive apples. However they weren't that effective in combat so far. And of course, since they are so tied together, let's just discuss Doc Q's horse Stronger right here. Stronger is another member of the Blackbeard Pirates, the 10th one we discussed so far. Stronger is just as sick as Doc Q, despite supporting the latter, so the two make quite the humorous duel. And because Blackbeard is so focused on gathering the best Devil Fruits, it makes sense that even Doc Q's horse has a pretty epic Devil Fruit. Specifically, he has the Horse Horse Fruit model Pegasus, which allows him to fly. We see him carrying both Doc Yu and Blackbeard through the air during the fight against the Hard Pirates, although he was definitely struggling under Blackbeard's added weight. 
And since there are 10 Titanic Commanders, but we only discussed 9 so far since Stronger isn't one of them, we still have a Mystery Commander of the 10th ship. Now it's speculation who this could be, but we do know that another member of the Blackbeard Pirates is former Admiral Kuzan, who is easily strong and deserving enough to be a Titanic captain. To me, one of the craziest aspects of the Blackbeard Pirates is still that they managed to get this legend to join them, a dude who was nominated by Sengoku to be Fleet Admiral. Now there are theories that he could be undercover working with Sword, but since that is only a theory, we're going to be treating Kuzan as a full member of the Blackbeard Pirates and an asset to their overall power. And as we saw recently, he does help them get things done. For example, he went with Augur to steal pudding and made it look easy, as he left everything frozen including Yanko Kamehameha. Commander Charlotte Cracker. He hasn't even shown up to some important battles like the one with Boa and the one with Law yet, but chances are that that's because Blackbeard felt like he could have handled those situations without him so far. Although, Kuzan may still appear during the battle against the Hard Pirates, you never know, especially since Augur and Pudding are there. Kuzan is currently 49 years old, meaning he's 9 years older than Blackbeard himself. Most of us know he has the Logia Ice Ice Fruit, which allows him to freeze landscapes and opponents, it allows him to turn water beneath him to ice, so that the ocean is practically a non-issue to him, and on a side note, such a power would massively trouble the Hard Pirates, who are specifically strong in the sea. My favorite aspect of his powers is that they let him bike over the sea as a mode of transport. Transportation. Obviously, Kuzan can also turn himself into ice whenever he deems it useful. Kuzan and his fruit powers are so strong that he was able to fight the current fleet admiral Sakazuki for 10 days and their clashing fruits permanently changed the climate of Punk Hazard, so that the island is now divided into a sea of fire on one side and icebergs on the other. Ultimately, it looks like Kuzan was defeated and then he resigned from the marines and eventually joined the Blackbeard Pirates. Now, the fact that Sakazuki spared his life could mean that they got some agreement about him acting on his own but still with Akazuki's secret approval, but that's just speculation at this point. Let me know your thoughts on Kuzan and where you think his allegiances lie. I mean, it is pretty suspect that the Admiral who was arguably the most moral is working for Blackbeard, but at the same time, I almost feel like it would be too predictable now for Kuzan to be working for Sword, and it would undermine the power of the Blackbeard Pirates, which would make their final conflict with the Straw Hats less intense. Then there are some less well-known Blackbeard Pirates like Kikipatsu. Kikipatsu was there sitting close to Blackbeard drinking and laughing while the latter was speaking to Gekko Moria. In a Vivra card, his name was revealed and it was noted that he loves plum beer and his nose turns red when he drinks it. It's pretty interesting that he can be so carefree in Blackbeard's presence. Then there's Maki, a woman with purple hair and an orange cowboy hat that was cozying up to Blackbeard as Kikipatsu was laughing. In a Vivra card, it was revealed that she was amused by Gekko Moria's fight with her crew members. And her name, when combined with Tori, who we're about to look into next, is a potential pun for Torimaki, meaning entourage, which seems pretty fitting so far. Tori is the other woman that was cozying up to Blackbeard at the time. She's blonde and wears a white dress. She clearly likes to drink since she has a bottle in both hands. But we're told she has a high level of tolerance and so unlike Kikipatsu, her complexion doesn't change. So who knows how relevant these three members will be later on, but Oda chose to put them close to Blackbeard and then to talk about them more in a Vibra card, so they could end up being more relevant than we'd at first suspect. Now aside from Blackbeard, the most interesting one and the one we'll get into soon, those are all of the official members of the Blackbeard Pirates, including Blackbeard and the unknown 10th Commander, that's 16 known members. But we also know that the Peachbeard Pirates had affiliated themselves with the Blackbeard Pirates as a subordinate crew. Peachbeard had a 52 million berry bounty, however he was taken out pretty easily by some Revolutionary Army commanders and the townspeople of Lulucia, who were pumped up by Bello Betty's pump pump fruit power. It's noteworthy to point out that the main ship of the Blackbeard Pirates is called the Sabre of Zebek. Of course, Rox D. Zebek was the legendary pirate captain of the Rox Pirates, a crew that included many legendary pirates including Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido to name a few. It seems Blackbeard wants to follow in his example and create a crew using the strongest people and also in his case, fruit powers that he can find. So now it's time to turn to the captain himself, Blackbeard. It is important to note here that Oda has stated that Blackbeard is his favorite historical pirate. As a result, you can bet Blackbeard is going to get very special treatment in the story. He already has, but that will continue no doubt. Yonko Blackbeard aka Marshall D. Teach is currently 40 years old, a year older than fellow Yonko Shanks, and has the second highest bounty of any current Yonko at 3.996 billion berries. He's only behind Shanks who is slightly ahead at 4.0489 billion. Put another way, Shanks is only 52.9 million ahead. And I have a feeling Blackbeards will surpass Shanks is real soon, especially considering that he had this bounty before he attacked Boa, kidnapped Kobe, and then attacked Law. 
Blackbeard has always been special, even before he got his OP Devil Fruit powers. Even back when Whitebeard's crew used to clash with Roger's crew, a young Blackbeard was singled out. Kid Buggy talks about how they say Blackbeard never slept in his life, and he calls him a monster. Ironically, Shanks wasn't too phased by him at this point, even though he'd go on to warn others like Whitebeard about how dangerous Blackbeard is down the line. Notably, at some point more than 12 years ago, Blackbeard gave Shanks the three scars he has over his eye, and Shanks emphasized that it wasn't because he was careless. Rather, Blackbeard was just that impressive, even before any Devil Fruit powers. And for anyone who says that Shanks has gotten way stronger since then, I raise you the very real possibility that Blackbeard has also improved just as much. Now we come to Blackbeard's insane level of patience. He refused the position of 2nd Division Commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, saying he did not have that kind of ambition, and people bought it, even though this dude is arguably the most ambitious guy in the entire series. So people that say Blackbeard relies too much on Devil Fruit powers are missing the fact that the dude seems to have vested Shanks when he gave him the scars, and he was capable of being a Yonko commander before he ever ate a fruit. The only reason he joined the Whitebeard Pirates is because he thought it was the best chance of getting the Dark Dark Fruit. And he stayed low-key until Thatch found the fruit, and then killed him, stole the fruit, and left the crew to start his own. That tells us at least two things, that Blackbeard is crazy patient, and that the Dark Dark Fruit must truly be very special if someone would go through all that just to get their hands on it. Even early on, Blackbeard tells Ace, with this, meaning the power of the Dark Dark Fruit, he is the strongest in the world. Blackbeard calls it the most dangerous power in the history of all Devil Fruit powers, no small statement considering how many epic fruits are out there. Blackbeard goes on to explain that darkness is gravity, a darkness so dense it sucks in everything, even light. Infinite gravity. Blackbeard then proceeds to show off, he tells Ace he's not going to attack him yet, and for him to just watch as he uses his powers to suck in the town. He uses the move Black Hole, and the whole town sinks into the darkness. Blackbeard explains his dark gravity compresses objects with infinite power and crushes them. Then he uses liberation and releases the destroyed pieces of the town from his darkness. And it's nothing but scrap wood afterwards. When Ace attacks Blackbeard, however, he's surprised at the fact that an apparent Logia doesn't let Blackbeard avoid fire attacks. Blackbeard explains, upset, that darkness sucks in everything. Whether it's punches, blades, bullets, fire, or lightning, his body absorbs pain and that pain is actually amplified in the process. But in exchange, there's another thing he can absorb. He uses the move Black Vortex and explains that the gravity of darkness can pull in the actual body of Devil Fruit users. Ace is sucked in until Blackbeard is holding his shoulder. Furthermore, now that Blackbeard is holding him, Ace can't use his Logia powers. Blackbeard punches Ace and the latter takes the full brunt of the attack because he can't just turn into fire and avoid it. Blackbeard further explains that the other thing his darkness absorbs is the power of the Devil Fruits. And jumping forward into the future, my assumption is that this fruit is also what allows him to extract other people's fruits, like he did with Whitebeard. As we know, Blackbeard was strong enough to beat Ace. Not only that, he succeeded in taking a live Ace hostage, which is harder to do because you have to make sure during the fight that you don't accidentally delete your opponent from existence. Since Blackbeard wanted him alive, he probably had to hold back during the fight as well. Blackbeard gave Ace to the world government, and then as a warlord, answered the call when the world government gathered the seven warlords to help them fight Whitebeard. All this time, Blackbeard was strategizing. By becoming a warlord, he gained special access to certain places, and that allowed him to break the deadliest level 6 prisoners out of Impel Down and to recruit them. Similarly, by handing over Ace to the world government, he guaranteed that Whitebeard would come, and so set the stage for eventually stealing his Tremor Tremor fruit, which is considered to be the strongest paramecia. When Whitebeard tries to use his fruit powers against Blackbeard, Blackbeard initially nullifies them with his Dark Dark Fruit. However, then Whitebeard cuts him with his blade and then forms a quake bubble around his head for maximum damage. This is when Blackbeard tells his crew to get Whitebeard. Whitebeard is already injured at this point, but he's still called a monster because he just refuses to go down. Blackbeard's crew attacks together, as previously mentioned, to finish him off. Then Blackbeard proceeds to somehow steal the lay Whitebeard's devil fruit power, but the whole time it was covered up, so we didn't see how he actually did it. But as mentioned, I personally think it is tied to the Dark Dark Fruit, and it's part of the reason Blackbeard devoted his whole life to find it. It could even potentially be the awakened power of the fruit. Blackbeard then uses the Dark Dark Fruit and the Tremor Tremor Fruit together to people's shock. Not only does he have two fruits, which is supposed to be impossible, those two fruits are insanely special. One is considered the strongest paramecia that can destroy the world, and the other is considered to be the most dangerous fruit power in history. Blackbeard himself says, and I quote, It's the gravity of darkness that turns everything into nothingness, and the power of the earthquake that destroys everything. Now I have it all, I'm invincible, I'm the greatest, end quote. It's even more crazy that he's saying all this while in the middle of a star-studded battlefield. Once again, Blackbeard is 
singled out for being special. Marco says it's true that normal humans can't have two different devil fruit powers, but he says Teach is a normal. His body is odd. Maybe that explains it, end quote. Blackbeard proclaims that as of today, his era begins. Blackbeard calls his new power exhilarating and causes a lot of insane tilting of the battlefield, but he comes to the conclusion that he can't control it too well yet. Even his own man tells him not to overdo it, or he'll take out the ground under them as well. Blackbeard is insanely confident at this point, calling out Buddha, Sengoku, and Hero Garp, asking if they think they can stop him. He says no one can stop him. It's crazy that all of this is happening pre-time skip. You gotta hand it to Blackbeard, it really seemed like he was ready to take on everyone present, until Shanks shows up to put a stop to the war. Shanks even calls out Teach asking if he wants to go. But Blackbeard passes saying he got what he wanted and that this is not yet the time for him to fight Shanks. So this change in Blackbeard definitely speaks to the power of Shanks and his crew, but it must be noted that Blackbeard doesn't look scared, he even laughs. They all got the same face here, plus Blackbeard got what he wanted. After the war, Blackbeard continues to accumulate feet after feet. In the new world, he beats fellow worst generation pirate Jewelry Bonnie and her crew. He ties her up and implies she's not strong enough to make it in the new world. He even says he doesn't need a weakling like her on the crew, but he'll take her along if she agrees to be his woman. She of course refuses, unlike Maki and Tori. During the time skip, while the Straw Hats are training, Blackbeard continues to dance in the pirate world. A year after the Paramount War, Marco and the other remnants of the Whitebeard Pirates clash with Teach and his Blackbeard Pirates in what the world calls the Grudge War. It is quite a large battle and each side brings in plenty of help, we're told. In the end though, Marco's group is obliterated, so it appears to have been a very one-sided war. This really speaks to Blackbeard's power because even without Whitebeard, Marco and the remaining Whitebeard Pirates and allies should not have been weak by any measure. Only after this major confrontation and smashing victory does Blackbeard join the list of Yonko. He goes on with his knowledge as a former Whitebeard Pirates member to conquer former Whitebeard territories, to expand his crew into a fleet, and his old crew members become the already explained Titanic captains, while Blackbeard himself becomes the Admiral. We also know that somehow during the Rocky Port incident, Kobe helped Blackbeard topple Ochoku, aka Wang Ji, a former member of the Rock's Pirates, and that ultimately made Blackbeard the boss of Pirate Island. During the Zoark, we find out that Blackbeard actually leveled the Revolutionary Army's headquarters. Luffy thinks it might be because Sabo fought with Burgess back in Dressrosa. It's a pretty crazy side note in the story and shows how Blackbeard doesn't even fear Dragon, the so-called world's worst criminal. We then get to the Wano arc where former warlord Gekko Moria searches for Blackbeard on Pirate Island. He finds out that Blackbeard Shiryu now has Absalom's clear clear fruit, meaning that Absalom is nothing more than a corpse now. Blackbeard then invites Moria to join his crew. Thus, we potentially have Moria joining Blackbeard's crew, although we won't go into detail with Moria and his Shadow Shadow Fruit yet, since it's just speculation at this point. However, there is a possibility at least that they could find Kaido after his defeat at Luffy's hands and finish him off. Moria wanted revenge on Kaido, and a lot of people speculated that Blackbeard wanted Kaido's mythical zone fruit. If they ended Kaido, Blackbeard can take the fruit and Moria can take the corpse. Just speculation, but it would definitely make Blackbeard and Moria happy if things turned out this way. Then again, Blackbeard could just take the Shadow 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 fruit powers and give them to another one of his crew members if he wanted to. During chapter 956, after the warlord system is disbanded, Blackbeard decides to set sail, saying if the navy is only going to take it, he might as well claim the prize. We later find out that the prize he had in mind was the Mero Mero no Mi aka Boa's Love Love Fruit that has the power to use emotions of lust or perversion to turn one into stone. Blackbeard with some crew members as we discussed comes to Amazon Lily saying that he's come for the pirate empress and that he won't let the navy have her. Soon Blackbeard is confronted with a pacifista. It looks like a kid mihawk but Lunarian with silver hair, brown skin, and black wings. The pacifista attacks with sword and easily cuts a mountain like mihawk did with the iceberg at Marineford. It definitely shocks Blackbeard but Blackbeard seems to deal with it nonetheless. He blocks his attack with armament hockey and then uses the dark dark fruits black hole attack. We next see Blackbeard holding Boa by the neck. As we know while he's holding her, her powers are nullified. At this point we see that Pirate Empress Boa has a bounty of 1.659 billion and Blackbeard's is 3.996 billion. Almost every marine and Blackbeard pirate around, including Vasco and Devon, has been turned to stone. Kobe is there watching helplessly. He wants Blackbeard to release Boa so she can return the others back to normal. But Blackbeard doesn't trust her. He's ready to kill her and seemingly sacrifice Vasco and Devon in the process. But then Rayleigh, the Dark Knight, and Gold 
Will D. Rogers' right hand man shows up. Rayleigh offers to mediate and defuse the situation. Blackbeard decides to agree to the terms and leaves. However, Rayleigh says that it was only the particulars of the situation which made it possible to save Boa, since at his age, he couldn't have possibly won in a head to head fight against Blackbeard. Now, this statement is huge praise for Blackbeard because if anyone can see strength and is strong himself, even if he's not in his prime anymore, it's Rayleigh. So it seemed like finally Blackbeard didn't get his way for once. But even that's debatable. Yes, the combined forces of Boa, Kobe, the pacifistas, and Rayleigh made him retreat, but his goal was also for the Navy not to get their hands on Boa's fruit. And now that she's in Rayleigh's hands, he probably feels like the Navy won't get it. Beyond that, he didn't come away empty handed. In fact, he used the opportunity to kidnap Captain Kobe, the hero of the Rocky Port incident. Now he has a very valuable hostage like when he had Ace, and he even got his crew members back. But it doesn't stop there. Recently, we saw Blackbeard attacking Law and his crew. He knew that one of them, either Law, Kit, or Luffy, would come this way and was prepared to fight whoever came. He wants to take all of their road poneglyphs, and so we have this fight now set up between Blackbeard and Law. But Blackbeard is obviously the heavy favorite. Law's crew hasn't shown itself to be that useful yet, while Blackbeard's is a crew of monsters with OP devil fruits, as we've seen throughout this video. It's very likely that this will just be another win to add to Blackbeard's list of accomplishments. And after he attacked Boa and kidnapped Kobe, I feel like this victory here against someone with the same bounty as Luffy at 3 billion berries will be more than enough to propel his bounty ahead of Shanks' bounty, which is already really close to Blackbeard's own. And so that covers Blackbeard and all of the known members of the Blackbeard Pirates. Obviously there's so much speculation that can be done about Blackbeard, about why he has three skulls on his pirate flag, about his true ties to Zebek, about why he can have more than one fruit power, and so on but that's not the topic of this video. For this one, we just covered what we know so far about Blackbeard and his crew members, and their trajectory alone definitely makes it clear that they'll be one of the final antagonists that Luffy has to take on. In fact, note how Blackbeard has 10 Titanic captains, while Luffy said in the beginning that he wanted to find 10 crew members. It's likely that in the end, Luffy will go up against Blackbeard, and he'll have each one of the 10 main Straw Hat crew members fight one of the 10 Titanic captains. And then we'll finally see who will win, the sun or the darkness. Although we probably all know that it will be Luffy the sun god and future pirate king, but nonetheless, the how will be very interesting. Now, channel parking with it and smash that like button until you set off the YouTube fireworks. If you enjoyed this video and want to keep these longer One Piece videos coming, be a smashing pirate king rather than passing Orochi and the universe will reward you accordingly. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to cover any other crews in detail like this. Make this the day you join the Nakama by subscribing and hitting that notification bell to turn on all notifications or you will miss future One Piece videos and updates updates, not to mention chapter reviews. While you wait for the next video to drop, feel free to check out my huge and growing One Piece playlist that includes videos on all the Yonko, all admirals, all zones, and much more. Link to that is in the description on screen now. Thanks again for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, drop a praise the sun in the comments to let me know and to support Luffy at the same time, the sun god. And until next time, see you space cowboys.